Hi everyone, Nigel Saunders here. It's been a while since I made my last video. I've been busy moving all my trees from the plant room and the basement outside. So now all my trees are outside here in the bonsai zone. The basement is dark once again. All the trees and benches are now outside. Up here in the plant room, I've got my three flood tables here empty and the back of the room I've moved all the benches out except for this one which still has to come outside and then I'm going to build all the stack shelves on the back wall for all my trees so I have access to them all over the winter. We have had almost three weeks of hot sunny weather with no rain so my rain barrel here has gone from 900 liters down to just below 100 liters. So I'm running out of rainwater very quickly. Here is a look at the bonsai area now. So I have the tables that were down on the basement outside with some of my forests and the ficus on them. I've got a lot of the benches that were in the plant room out here now. So this area is just full of trees. My poly house is full of trees now. A lot of the trees in here are transitioning to full sunlight. So this plastic is kind of opaque or cloudy, so it kind of filters the light so they don't get too badly sunburnt. And they'll eventually come from the poly house here out onto the benches. I also have a few benches where I transition trees here. They get a bit of sunlight in the morning, then they're in the shade for the afternoon. And then towards the evening, they go back into the sun again. So it's a good area to transition trees to full sunlight. It sure is nice having all the trees in one spot outside here. They do, however, require a lot of watering. I have enough rainwater to last maybe two more days. And then I'll have to switch to tap water, which I don't like to do because it leaves white deposits on everything. It's the lime in the water. Hopefully we'll get rain soon. There might be some coming this weekend. Today, I'm going to be working on my banyan tree or ficus bengalensis. This is the original tree and I chopped it twice, making two cuttings of this tree. Here is the one cutting that rooted and is growing fine. And I'll show you the other one also. Here's a look at my third cutting, a smaller one. This was the top of the tree. And instead of sprouting new growth out of the cutting that was above the soil, it sent a shoot out from below the soil up here. So the cutting survived. It just didn't grow the way I intended, but it will make another tree for the future. I'm just going to keep my original tree here. The others I'll give away. So I pruned this tree fairly short in hopes to get low branches to spread out like a banyan tree. I'll show you some images of banyan trees to show you the style that I want for this one. So that was a look at some images of giant banyan trees. So I want to grow these lower branches out long and low. I've got another ficus kind of developing in that style. I'll show you that. It's my ficus rumphii. Here is a look at my ficus rumphii. This was a cutting given to me by Connor and it had these really low branches on it and I kept those. I wanted to train this in sort of a banyan tree style with low branches, a short canopy, and but very wide. So I'm hoping aerial roots drop off these branches eventually. As these branches thicken up, it'll look like they almost come from the ground. The trunk will sort of disappear as this tree ages. It'll be kind of a unique style. I didn't want it looking like a, a typical ficus bonsai. I've already begun the bonsai process on the top of the tree getting some low branches for my banyan style. It's planted in a root maker pot, which is a great pot to generate roots. However, I don't want roots going, I don't want tall vertical roots. I want my roots to spread out and create that buttressed effect at the base of the ficus. 
So today I'm going to be repotting the tree from this tall pot to a shallow pot, trying to get those roots to spread out, creating a buttressed root system. Here is a look at the pot I'll be using for my banyan tree. This is a plastic training pot from Fuku Bonsai. I've used this for many, many of my ficus, starting them out, getting that root spread going, that radial root spread. So I think it'll be a really good pot for my banyan style ficus bengalensis. This tree, when it was growing on the bench, had roots coming out of the drainage holes here, growing down and reaching the floor of the greenhouse. So it had really long aerial roots. So what I'm saying is it may be difficult to get this tree out of this pot because the roots may have kind of fused with the drainage holes. You can see them coming through the drainage holes here. And these root maker pots have holes all the way around and ribs on the inside of the pot to stop the roots spiraling around the pot. Instead, it causes them to subdivide and grow kind of a thick root system. So today we'll see how well that worked on this tree. I'm going to start by trying to cut away any roots that are sticking through holes here. In hopes of freeing up the tree in the pot. That might be okay. Here's another root sticking through here. That one's okay. Here's another root. Here's a thick one coming through a hole. That would definitely make it hard to get the tree out of the pot. Some more over here. Okay, well, that's hopefully freed it up. Let me try pulling it out of the pot now. All right, here I go. I have to be careful not to disturb these shoots at the base of the tree. Wow, it's really in there. I'm pulling on the top of the tree here. It does not want to come out. That may be one of the problems with these root maker pots is they tend to lock themselves into the pots. I'll try squishing the pot, trying to loosen up the root system, see if that helps. There is flex in the pot, which shows that it's not, you know, totally filled with woody roots. There's room for the soil to compress. All right, let's try again. Definitely feels more flexible in there. I think it's these roots locked in at the bottom here that's stopping it. Yeah, they can't slide up because they're sticking out too far, so I've got to nibble those away. So I'll come in here with my, my curve cutters, concave cutters, and try and carve away the roots in this drainage hole area. I don't think this would be a problem with most trees, but ficus they grow so many roots that it's kind of locked itself in the pot. We'll see if it's worth, you know, developing it in a root maker pot once I pull it out and see what the root system's like. If it's just kind of normal, well, maybe the root maker pot isn't worth growing a ficus in. Okay, let's try this again. All right, here I go. Okay, it's coming out now. So that worked loosening it up. So here's a look at the root system. My initial thoughts is, is that the roots like to grow vertical and out the drainage holes in the bottom. They didn't really, it's not packed with roots, the soil. So and you can see there's still a thick root here it doesn't create, you know, a super fine root system on this ficus. 
I mean, we'll see more once I comb out the root system, but my initial thoughts is I'm not that impressed with the root maker pot with my ficus. I'm going to begin combing out the root system now. I take these root maker pots with some trees, they work really, really well, but I don't know, like, I'm going to look at the development of the roots and just see if I would have been better just planting it in a shallow pot or a regular nursery pot. See if this root maker pot did anything exceptional. Because if it performs just like a regular pot, well, what's the point of the expense of a root maker pot? Like I'm not seeing this root system just packed in here and I'm still seeing thick roots. Like the idea of the root maker pot is these roots are supposed to hit the, the holes in the pot and air prune themselves. So I, I think, you know, a mesh basket does that really well. Some of those mesh pots, those pond pots. But you know, here you can see my root system. I've got a really thick root there. It's a very unbalanced root system. And this has been in this pot for, uh, I think, just the one year. Yeah, last summer it, it lived in this pot for the whole summer and I think I repotted it in the, maybe even in the winter. Or fall. But yeah, there's, I mean, there's nothing exceptional with this root system right now. It's not super fine and dense. It's not all that radial. I mean, it's okay, but it's... Nothing exceptional, that's for sure. And I tell people, you know, a root maker pot does not make a good bonsai root system. It takes pruning. It can help. It's, uh, it's better probably than a regular pot, but it's certainly not. It doesn't perform miracles. And it's the same with any other root technique, like placing a tile underneath the root system. It still doesn't stop you getting uh, some roots forming really thick and others really thin. It doesn't balance your root system. The only way to do that is with pruning and frequent repotting. So in all my, you know, 30 years of growing bonsai, I've never really encountered many shortcuts to success. It all comes down to pruning, proper pruning, good care of your trees. There's no easy way to make an instant bonsai. Okay, so that root system is combed out and I will wash it and then I'll be ready for the root pruning. I have got the root system washed. Now, because there's all these shoots on the trunk here, I have to be very careful with the tree. I can't let it, you know, fall down or anything. So my first priority, I want to get a flat root system so the tree stands upright. And yeah, so a shallow flat root system to start that buttressed root base. So here is the tree. You can see this root kind of doesn't flow. It kind of actually, instead of being level, it tilts upwards a bit. So I think that root's going to have to go. This one will have to be cut off very, very short. This one is in a radial direction. Here is radial and it's cranked way over here. So that'll have to get cut off. So let me begin the root work. All right, here I go. So. Let's start with this one that doesn't go horizontal. It actually kicks up. So I'm going to have to cut that on an angle. So I'll rough cut it off here first using my 
ironwood ratcheting pruners. And then I'm going to come in on an angle like this so it kind of flows a bit. Right here. Here I go. Cutting it off like that. There's a couple growing straight down here. I'll get rid of those. They're thicker roots. I'm untangled. Oh, there. And then over here, I have one coming down on too much of an angle. So I'll prune that off about here. Like that, really shortening that. And this is the one that's cranked over. It's not a radial direction. So I'm going to prune off the part that's not radial. Like that. Keeping a stub and then I'll prune it on an angle also. So I'll get all kinds of new roots growing from that cut point and that'll be the start of a radial root system. I've got a few more roots growing straight down here so I need to prune those off shorter. Shorter, shorter, shorter. So I'm hoping it kind of sits upright. I'm a little... Could cut this a little more here. Making it flat on the bottom like that and the top will taper into the the soil so that's pretty good now i think that root system has a chance of developing a nice radial root system for the future yeah i uh i will also just prune some of the longer ones off around the perimeter here kind of balancing my root system hoping that one root doesn't get stronger than the other, so it kind of grows equally. That's the goal, is to prevent big thick roots happening like this one, to grow them all out evenly. Okay, that is ready to be planted. Even though this tree is very early in its development, I still want to find the front of the tree before I plant it, and I'll explain why. A typical bonsai container is longer side to side than it is front to back and that's just the proportions of a typical bonsai container whether it's an oval or a rectangular so when you grow your root system you want the tree to kind of fit the container um, so generally from the front view your root spread is wider left and right than it is if you come to the side view it's not as wide in the side view front to back so your root system kind of takes the shape of the container. So when a tree is young, you want to pick the front and then develop the root spread to fit a typical bonsai container. So the roots will be longer left and right and shallower front to back. With my training pot here, you can see how it's longer side to side than front to back. So I'm going to pick the front of my tree and start that process of developing a wider root spread left and right and keeping them shallower front to back that way it'll always fit in the pot really nicely so to pick a front for this tree it has a bit of a curve to the trunk so I have two options I can have the curve come forward making the tree very straight I can show off that curve I think what will determine the front on this tree is the what is the best root base I'm thinking somewhere about here is a good looking root base. I've got a branch to the left, I've got a branch to the right, and other branches to choose from. So I think if I plant it like this, that's kind of the best of all the features of the tree. I'll get some drainage screens covering these holes in the bottom of the pot, get a base layer of soil in the pot, and then we'll come and plant the tree. I've got my drainage screens in place, so now I will add a base layer of soil to the bottom of the pot. And 
and I think that's good for a base layer of soil. It's a good height. All right, here goes the tree in the pot. Now, I don't want the tree dead center in the pot. I'll, I'll put it offset slightly. There's a good strong branch on this side, so I'll, I'll put it over here just slightly. Fairly central in the pot, and then I will comb out the roots the best I can to get them nice and radial and flowing. There's one here I might need to correct. It's kind of a curvy root. So I'll prune the end off that. The rest are looking quite good. Okay, I will add my soil now around the tree. And I'll be burying it quite deeply at first. And then over the years, I'll slowly expose the roots. So you can see it's standing upright in the pot now. I'm stepping back, having a look at it. Now it looks fine. It looks vertical. Yes, good planting angle. From the side view, it looks vertical too. I'll begin filling in the pot with soil. These pots take a lot of soil. There's a lot of surface area. They're not that deep, but they, they can hold a lot of soil. I've run out of soil, so I'll use some of the soil that I took out from the original pot. It was only a year old. It's good soil, and I'll finish top dressing with that. This old soil had no weeds in it, so I'm not worried about, you know, weeds or pests or anything in the old soil. This tree lived most of its life in the greenhouse here, so it didn't get any weeds or bugs. There's a few roots mixed in with it, but they, they won't hurt. And then I'll also work in the soil around the root system. So I'll just make sure that soil's worked in around the roots before I give the tree a watering. Now I could put a little more soil. There's some aerial roots coming off the trunk there. So I'll put a little more soil around the base of the tree. Keeping all those radial roots alive. And that'll help create a buttress root system. Like that. Kind of shaping my soil to the contour I want my root system to look like. Okay. It is time to water the tree. All right, here I go with the water. All right, that should do. It's time now for today's update. And today's update is going to be the progress on the Porsche 911. Over the weekend, Julian and I got the truck back on the road and the matrix. So I got the truck in the backyard here. It started first turn of the key, which was amazing. So we're getting ready to hook it up to the trailer here. It's over here, so I've just got to clear out a bit more of the stuff around here clear a path to tow it out and we're going to tow it out into the driveway get it off the trailer up on jacks and have a good look at it i'll be showing more updates of the truck and the porsche as work progresses over the summer i'm going to keep the banyan tree on the floor of the greenhouse here where it gets a little more shade it's a little cooler there's no wind until it recovers and starts growing again with vigor then I'll slowly transition it to outdoors. I'm really looking forward to developing this banyan tree into the future. I think today I got the root system on the right track, getting a nice radial, even balanced root system. I think over the summer you'll see the base of the tree thicken up as those roots develop. I think you'll see the branches begin to thicken up and ramify. It'll be an exciting summer of growing. I'm looking forward to developing this tree into the future. That is all for today. I'm Nigel Saunders. Thanks for joining me in the Bonsai Zone.